informal chat here. Um, so for, we talked to you, I don't know, what, four or five weeks ago before the start of the season. Correct. Um, so we're, you're three three races in? Uh, boy, I guess we're uh, three, four, we're five races in. Five races in? Yeah, okay. five races. Um, so five races in, update us on the year so far. Uh, it's been a good start to the year, both boys and girls. The boys have really been surprising because we lost some state championship kids last year um, to the college level. We lost a really good girl to the college level as well. Um, I think the disappointing thing on the girls' side, we probably have a state championship caliber team coming back, but we've lost one of our returners to injury uh, for the season, another to club soccer for the season, it appears. So, yeah, the depth is not there, but they're, they're still performing well. Won a couple meets already this year, including this past weekend in Knoxville against 35 teams in Tennessee. Uh, so we still got a shot at the top, you know, to, to compete for a state title, but, you know, it's it's a little bit of a longer shot than what I expected. But overall, solid girls team. On the boys' side, a bunch of scrappy young kids doing the best they can. And, you know, both programs are, you know, girls I think are ranked right now sixth in the state. Boys are eighth in the state, so I can't really complain about anything. No, that's not too shabby at all. And actually, the next thing I wanted to ask was really honing in on, on the girls' side. And, you know, the two names that we're, we're currently hearing most – Vanessa Torres, Jose Beth Graciano, what makes these those two young ladies so speci- those two young ladies specifically? What makes them so special? What what makes them continue to to be so consistent? Yeah, I think Vanessa Torres, her ceiling's really high. She's just uncertain about herself. She she kind of depends on Jose Beth and Ariane Hoyos, our third girl, to kind of push her. Um, but Vanessa's got talent that she is just not tapping yet, and she's a junior. I think she's starting to realize how good she can be. Um, she finished a little further ahead of Hosebeth than she normally does, which tells me she was willing to run away from Hosebeth a little bit. Um, Hosebeth, just steady leader, steady leader. Um, probably the best girl I've ever coached, top to bottom. Academics are through the roof, just maturity through the roof, dependability through the roof. She's, she she doesn't want the, the title of a team leader, but, you know, like it or not, it's there. Yeah, whether and, you want it or not, yeah, is right. And, and she's a tremendous track athlete. You know, her range on the track is from the 400 all the way up, and she runs the 5K very well. But like Vanessa, she's built for the 5K. She's built for cross country. She's a smaller girl. She can move a little cleaner. Um, Hosebeth's just, she's a competitor. If, and, if every girl on the team had Hosebeth's mentality, yeah. it would be a tremendous team. The, the, the third girl, Ariane Hoyos, tremendous ability too. Just been a struggle to get her to understand and, and want that pressure of being great. And, you know, the, the struggle that it, it takes to get to be great. It's not easy to be great in cross-country or track. So it's interesting when I hear you talk about the young ladies, there's sort of a underlying theme, a common denominator. They all have this incredible ability, but they shy away from it That's a correct. little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not sure, you know, whereas Hosebeth, you know, we talked yesterday, Hosebeth came in as a freshman and she was really already engaged. She wanted to be great. I think it's taken a few, little bit of time with Vanessa and Ariana, even though I knew the talent and ability was there as freshmen. Um, but they're, they're finally starting to realize it's going to be their team next year. There won't be a Hosebeth there or Victoria there or Alexa Hoyos, which is Ariani's older sister. They won't be there. So it's going to be on Vanessa and Ariani to take that team and, and maintain the level that we've been at for about four or five years. You mentioned uh, Knoxville, going to Knoxville this mm-hmm. past weekend. Y'all participated in the Cherokee Classic. 35 other teams. Yeah, 35. Um, in, you know, incredible showing by the girls. Mm-hmm. Host Beth, Vanessa finish in the top five. Yeah. Um, and they the girls win the overall title. But um, uh, athletics aside, uh, and I think boys finished fifth. Your JV yeah. boys had a good run. Yeah, yeah overall um, great, And, great. you know, overall great. Yeah. Athletics aside, though, um, you know, Coach, we exist within a student population um, that is – Poverty poverty rate is high. Um, a lot of our students, uh, especially our student athletes, the experiences they get within with Gainesville High School are the experiences they get. Yeah. Uh, and so to be able to take your student athletes out of state to a place like Knoxville, Tennessee, yeah. uh, unbelievable. When was the last time you took a team out of state on that kind of trip? Well, Okay, every year I try to build the program a little bit more as far as the out-of-state trips or just the overnight trips. Right. I, I try to make it, you know, we've got two more overnight trips coming up, and those are state-related trips, sectionals and state, and those are all business. But if I don't create a little bit of fun, you know, it's 
it's just not beneficial. I got I got to find ways to create a little bit of energy and excitement. Uh, two years ago, we did go out of state to Spartanburg. We went and toured a college up there that had three or four of our, our runners that were now running for Converse University. That was kind of fun. Um, last year, we hit the aquarium because we had the trip to Knoxville planned and it got canceled. So we hit the aquarium, we raced in Carrollton. This year, I think the thing, you know, we, we had an FCA breakfast to start the trip. Then we swung by Bucky's to let them have some fun. Then we drove up to Knoxville to see the course, back to Pigeon Forge to check in, let them have some time at the swimming pool, ran the race, they, ex they exceeded expectations. And then we, we finished it all off with Dollywood, Dollywood Amusement Park, a lot of fun. Um, just, I think the, the thing that I took away from the trip is I want to start building trips where there's some fun after the race. Right. Usually we, we finish the race, we get on the bus on an out-of-state trip or an overnight trip, and it's let's get back to Gainesville, get on with the weekend on a Saturday. In this case, it was a three-day, two-night trip. And I think having that experience at Dollywood afterwards, waking up on Sunday morning and having breakfast as a team, a little morning run in Pigeon Forge, um, you know, it's just a better trip. I think having the fun at the end was a difference maker. So what is it like as a coach to see these young people that you invest so much time in, let loose, have some fun, and you're able to do that. You and your, your wife was up yeah. there, a steady part of this trip. Yeah. Um, what's it like to see to see your kids in that light? Yeah, you know, it's just fun to see. For some of them, there I think there were three of them that said, Coach, this is the first time I've ever ridden a roller coaster. Yeah. You know, and that's just so rewarding to me because I've kind of grown up in my life in a, you know, a privileged environment. I mean, I, I didn't mm -hmm. lack for a whole lot. My parents yeah. took me to Disney World, things like that all the time. Um, I still go to Disney World all the time, and I've wanted to share those experiences with these kids. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these kids might have gone to Six Flags, but Dollywood's a step up. Right. Um, especially considering you're out of state, you're in Tennessee, you know, the mountains are there and everything. Um, another kid in the summer, we, we did summer goals for the season, and one of his goals was, i just like to go on a vacation for the first time. Well, we kind of accomplished that. Might not have been with his family, which would have been more meaningful, you know, but I feel like in a way I'm part of these kids' families. Yeah. You know, and um, – and certainly having my wife on the trip was huge. You know, I really liked that she was able to engage with the kids, get to meet a lot of the kids. She doesn't go to the meets with me. Um, we leave early. We leave early for most of our meets, and she has to stay back and take care of the dogs and cats. Um, Coach Koldoff's family was there. That was outstanding. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think just having family there so that they can understand what goes into these kind of things mm -hmm. and get to know the kids that we probably come home and talk more about than we should. You know? So I, I got to ask you two kind of random questions, but but they fit it. Um, you mentioned earlier when we were talking about the trip to Bucky's, you gave the kids thirty minutes. Yeah. Thirty minutes, have at it in Bucky's. What was sort of the the is there is there like one wild thing that that one of our one of our athletes bought? Oh, they bought these onesies, whatever <laughs> they call those things. They were the the, the whole Bucky's <laughs> outfit. I think three or four of them. You know, I don't know what they cost thirty five forty dollars. All of a sudden, they're walking around Bucky's, posing with a person dressed as Bucky's from their company, you know, in their onesies. You know, and then we took a big group photo out there in front of the little Bucky statue that they have in front of their stores. I don't know. I, for 30 minutes, I just walked around <laughs> laughing at what they were buying. These kids, I mean, it was all kinds of stuff. But the onesies kind of threw me off because it was about 90 degrees already. Yeah, yeah. And they get on the bus in the onesies. Pretty soon those onesies were coming off. Oh, that's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. I don't yeah. even want to think about it. Yeah. Um, and, and where Dollywood's concerned, is there is there one particular moment? You mentioned, you know, the young people say it's the first time they've ridden a roller coaster. It just does my heart good. Yeah. Knowing, knowing our kids and, and, and where they come from and, um, you know, the kind of effort that's being put in to get them where they're going. But uh, is there one particular experience at Dollywood that sort of stands out? Well, it, I, I, you know, I guess the experience that stands out for me is the fact that I gave them an hour, hour and a half of free time at the end of the day. You know, we, we kind of moved through Dollywood as a group, as a team, because I was a little worried about losing kids. As it started to get dark, I became even more worried trying to keep 25 right. kids together in the mm -hmm. dark. Um, so at about 7 o'clock, 7.15, I, I kind of gave, we'd ridden our last ride, really good ride, everybody had fun. And then I gave them an hour and a half of free time an hour and a half of just go ride as much as you want to ride or go take pictures or just walk around. And um, my hope was that I'd get them all back at 845 in front of the gift shop. And at 845, they were all there. That's so awesome. I guess if you're asking me the one experience that stands out, it's the fact that these kids, it's probably the best group of kids I've ever had. They were well-behaved. They were where they were supposed to be at all times, even with all the distractions of Dollywood or the island at Pigeon Forge, the things they could have snuck out of a hotel to go do. Um, no, they, that's the experience I took away that 
they were they were a great group. That's an impressive and unexpected answer. Uh, but yeah, I can as as a former coach, I can completely yeah, understand I, where you're coming from. From the kids' point of view, I think just riding the roller coaster. I, of course, I yeah. asked the kids yesterday. Several of them, I said, you know, I wish we'd had another hour or two. I'm I'm sorry we didn't have more time, and they said. Coach, we wrote everything we needed to write. <laughs> That's so great. I think that was a great answer from them that I didn't feel like that they they didn't feel like they missed out on it. Yeah, they weren't shorted in any way, right. except maybe meeting Dolly Parton. Yeah, yeah. They did. Would they even have known who she was? Probably not. Yeah, I figured. I figured. <laughs> um, so okay, back to back to the athletic side, and as we wrap up with you, um, Hall County Championships yeah. coming up this weekend, North Hall Community Center. Mm-hmm. Um, you all start mm-hmm. eight nine a.m. JV's involved, varsity obviously as yeah. well. Uh, give us a quick preview. Well, you know, Coach Borg at North Hall is a good friend of mine. We actually exchanged some text messages last night, this morning, about the weather that's coming in. Um, really, every year, it's it's a two-team meet. It's North Hall and Gainesville at the mm-hmm. top. Uh, Flowery Branch has got a good team this year on the boys' side. There's always somebody. And, and you know, it, North Hall is a great program, and, uh, and they're predicted to win. We're predicted in the virtual meet to be second. And that's okay. I, I, I want to win county, but most of all, I want to get out of county healthy. I really do. And the kids, you know, county is an opportunity for the kids' families to come. It's the closest meet right. you know, that we race. And that's why it's an important meet for us to continue to do. Um, but as a coach, I really, and I think Coach Borg would say the same thing. He's, he's got a team that's capable of winning the 3A state championships this year for North Hall. And I think his, you know, the, his view is also let's let's compete the meet, let's compete hard, but let's be healthy as well and, and look forward to the sectionals and state meets. And and for me, I you know, our kids got a chance to win. It's when it comes down to a two team meet, even though there's eight schools in the meet, mm-hmm. it's really about putting your jersey on the jersey. Right. It? So if they want to beat North Hall, and I told them this yesterday, if they want to beat North Hall, it's there. They're just as good. They're just gonna have to race that green jersey. They're gonna have to put their jersey in front of a green jersey and put an extra point on them. On the girls' side, real close. Yeah. Last year it was a one point win for North Hall. Right. So it's been been a good run for the girls' team against North Hall. And North Hall's got incredibly great uh, an incredibly great girls' team. So for our girls to match up says a lot about our girls' team. Fantastic stuff from you as always. I love talking to you. Uh, any any final thoughts before we wrap up with you? Well, just um, I think I, I, it's changed a little bit this year with cross country. They've gone away from the region championships, so that used to matter a little bit. Going to win a region title was important. This year, as we get closer to sectionals, which is where four regions will be combined, top 12 teams going instead of 16, which would have been four out of all four of those regions. Mm -hmm. Um, It's going to be more of a privilege to get the state this year. It used to be 32 teams getting there. It's 24 now. Wow. Yeah. Um, So it's a little more cutthroat. Um, But we're excited. Sectionals is going to be tough. The four regions we go with are the three that we compete against, rather. Um, are more quality regions because they're out of Cobb County or up here in you know, the, the counties that have traditionally good cross country programs. Right. We'll match up well, and then we'll go to state five, six days later, I guess. But really, the goal is to get through sectionals healthy and maybe not push as hard. Um, just be top 12. 12th is as good as first at sectionals, and then go get it at state and see how we do. Amen to that. Go big red. All right. Thank you.